Hello everyone, this is a demonstration of Java doc. Uh, this week there will be no lab assignments, but a video uh, demonstration will be posted, which will be helpful for your next lab. Since in the next lab, you'll have to complete your lab tasks and also submit the corresponding Java uh, documentation for that code that you'll be submitting in the next, next lab. So the next lab will have more marks co uh, compared to the other labs. It will be equivalent to two labs since you'll be doing two tasks at the same time. First of all, your normal code will be given and also the corresponding Java doc should be should also be generated for that code. Okay, so uh, let us start. And also there is uh, another thing that you should remember that is uh, for every lab group, this is uh, the message that every, everyone should start learning about Java doc from now since at the end of the semester, the uh, project that you're going to submit there should be a corresponding Java doc for that project as well. Uh, any part that has been completed by any particular team member should be also mentioned in that Java doc. I'll be showing how you can do that, how you can uh, actually refer to particular parts that were completed by particular people. Uh, these things can, can be very easily done by using J uh, Java doc. It makes, uh, the only thing that you'll have to do is to know the structure of it. You just have to fill in some stuff and it will generate all the things for you. The whole end product will look very uh, professional, but the thing is you don't actually have to do a lot of stuff if you know how to use the Javadoc API. So this is basically an API, Javadoc. Uh, this Javadoc is basically an API that has been built by Sun Microsystems and is now a part of Oracle. So, and it is always built into any Java J, uh, JDK that you install in your system. It is always there, this Javadoc. And IDE is like NetBeans, then uh, Eclipse, these always allow you to very easily write the Java doc and uh, generate it. Without IDE, this will be tough to do. So that is why from this lab onwards, you'll actually be needing your IDE, whichever one you prefer to use, either Eclipse or NetBeans. In the previous labs, there was a choice that you did not need to use the uh, IDE. You could just directly write the Java code in any notepad, as long as you had the uh, knowledge of uh, compiling and running it using the command prompt, you could have done it. But now you'll actually need the IDE or it will be a lot harder. So it is recommended to use uh, your IDE from now on. For demonstration, I'll be using my NetBeans IDE. So here I have uh, my NetBeans IDE open and I have created a dummy project to show this Java example. So to start you off, what you could have done, what I have done, I, I'm actually going to show you now. You can just go here create a new project Java with and and then Java with and Java application next. Then you just create a project. In my case, what I did is I just named it Java doc example, as you can see here. Uh, so I named it and I created it. You, when you click on finish, you'll have this, except these two things, you'll have all these things. Okay, so this is what you'll have inside. So then what I did was I went inside this, uh, the default package that was created for it. And I had one, function, uh, a class, I created a new class that had the main function with it. The, and then I also created another class from here right, by right clicking the package and then going to Java class, clicking on it. And then I actually created this. Okay, I'm just going to show this now. So here I just wrote point. Okay, I have already created it. So I'm not going to create it again. See, I already have this existing. Uh, point of Java. So when I did it, I got this point of Java class. So within it, what I did was I started writing this code. I created, uh, this was a public class point. And inside this, I wrote these few fu uh, functions and some properties that it has attributes. So this, these are its two attributes. A point has X and Y coordinates and it has some, and I made some uh, methods for it. Okay. So this is actually a very small code, but this looks huge. Why? Because a lot of lines were taken by this Java doc tags. So these, these are the parts that will be used for the Java doc API. Okay. So in Java, there are two kinds of, uh, three kinds of commenting actually. And two of them are comments. One of them is for Java doc. So let me just show some examples here. For example, when you write anything with double slash, Forward slash, double forward slash and then write anything. This gets 
uh, ignored by the compiler. The Java compiler does not compile these parts. So this is an inline comment. Okay. So this thing is an inline comment. But when I want to write multiple line comments, then what I can do is I can start by using forward slash, then start. Then when I press enter, uh, the IDE will automatically end it with a uh, star and forward slash and within it I can write anything. Okay, so this will act as a multi-line comment. You can see an example of multi-line comment here. Here. So this was auto-generated when I created the project. I, the IDE auto-generates these things. So this is a, just an example. Okay, so here you can see that uh, I can write multi-line comments like this. Multi, multi-line comments. Okay, so this is an example of a multi-line comment. So how can you write a Java doc? A Java doc is basically just the difference that happens here is a double star. After forward slash, you give a double star. Then when you press enter, it will automatically create this structure for you uh, so that you can start writing Java docs. So this is the example of a Java doc. Okay, Java doc. So everything you write here within these uh, tags will be treated as a Java doc uh, uh, string. So this will be compiled by not the uh, code compiler, but the Java doc API. And it will allow it to create a, to convert it into an HTML document, which I will show later. For now, just know that anything you write within this will be treated as Java doc. Okay, so you can have as many lines as you want. It will automatically generate these things for you uh, whenever you press enter. And this is only applicable for IDEs, of course, in normal, if you write the code using notepad, this won't happen. You'll have to do all these things by yourself. So this is very difficult. So it is very uh, highly recommended that you use IDEs for this lab and onwards, either NetBeans, Eclipse, or any IDE you want. Also Sublime Text, I think also works with this and uh, IntelliJ IDE, that also works. Okay, so now that I have shown the differences between comments, multi-line comments and Java doc. Now let us show what actual Java doc writing looks like. Okay, so by default, you can see that sometimes Java doc, uh, when you create a new project, some Java doc tags are already created for you. For example, this part was actually created for me when I created this new class. Okay, not this one. Okay, for this one. When I created the, uh, the new project, this part was automatically created for me. This, this was not here, okay. This was not here, only this author was here. And what I did was I just uh, wrote this out myself. This is just a description. So the general structure of a Java doc tag is like this. Within this structure, what you'll have is, in the first part, you'll have some description. Okay, so this is basically a description. And then after that, you can have as many parameters as you want. If you are, if this is a function, in this case, this is a class. So it can only have some description and some maybe an author, whoever wrote this class. So this author tag, uh, this author tag is useful for when you have multiple people working in your project. So this, this one might be helpful for your project. So remember that there are different tags like this. When you write at the rate, different kinds of uh, things will come here in suggestion. As you can see, author is one of them, deprecated, hidden, param, C, then scenes, version. Also, uh, some others are not being shown here. Uh, for example, return. Return is also included among the tags. Okay, if you, are, if you have a function here, you can write a return tag and then give some description of your, whatever value it is returning. So I'll be showing that later. For now, just remember that there are different kinds of tags within it, within a Java doc. Okay, and when you, and these are all accessed by using at the rate. So at the rate author, at the rate exception, then, at the rate uh, param. This is for the para if there are multiple parameters here. So in this case, these things won't happen because this is a class and classes don't have uh, anything like that. So the general structure, again to repeat, is that you start writing this uh, Java doc before anything you want to include in the Java doc. For example, if you want to write a Java doc for a class, then you start writing it before the class. If you have a function, as I've uh, already created one here. Suppose this is a constructor. Okay, for a constructor, I want to have a uh, documentation. So what I will do is I'll just simply write this part before the constructor. I've written on, I've already written this uh, for uh, time constraints. I'm just, I'm not writing this out 
in front of you. I'm just, I have already written this and I'm just showing you now. Okay, so I have this construction, I have this function. So before all these things, if I want to write some documentation for them, I'll just give this part before each, of, each one of them. And I'll write some description for them. So the first part is the description. Then at the rate param, I can write about the parameters that you, it will take. For example, it will take other, which is a parameter for it. This was automatically generated. Okay, so let us uh, directly show an example of this. So in here, this is a class that is going to use, uh, that is going to create objects of another class that is point. This point class was, was also created by me. So here, what is this point class? Suppose this is very easy to understand now, but suppose you are creating a class that is not so easy like this. It is, uh, for example, in your project, you might have a class that is huge of hundred lines. So any user so, such as myself uh, may not be able to just see a few lines of your code and understand what is going on here. So what you can do is before your class, you can write a short description of your class, what it is, what it is supposed to do, who wrote this class, uh, and then when it was written, for example, the add, add version is usually used for uh, giving some version name. Uh, for example, uh, suppose it, is, it was written in 2020, so I'm writing it as, as 20.20.1, uh, 20.0.1, and I'm writing a date for it. Okay, so it was 23, 11, 20. Okay, so I can write it like this. So just remember that before a class, you can write documentations in this format. Give your description, you can give some authors if there are uh, whoever wrote this uh, class and you can give a version. This is These are all optional. You can give a version that uh, it, it, will, it was written for this particular version of, of your program. Okay, I'm not actually going to write this. Uh, okay. So now what I have is inside this point, I have some uh, attributes like X and Y, and then I have a constructor for it, which will uh, take as parameter two uh, values and it will just assign them to the, this objects properties, uh, whichever object will be created using this con constructor, that object will have these values as it's X and Y. Okay. so. This is actually very easy to understand now, but suppose your function is not so easy, it is very difficult, then you would have to write a, a Java doc for it. So here, just for simplicity, I have written a Java doc, even though for such a small function, you never actually need a Java doc, but it is always good to have a Java doc, even if it is uh, an easy function. So here, I have a Java doc for it. Look at this Java doc where I'm just writing a description for it at first. What it, what it does. So I've written constructs and initializes a 2D point on X, Y, okay, uh, on X, Y coordinate. Okay, and then these things were auto-generated. When I wrote this part and pressed enter, these things were auto-generated for me based on what I wrote here. So I gave two parameters here. So automatically two param, at, param, uh, at the rate param, uh, tags were created with X and Y. And then I had to just write X coordinate and Y coordinate for explaining what these two parameters will be used for. So, okay, so this is, was just one example of it. Also, notice that uh, I have created another function called distance, which will uh, uh, generate, uh, which will calculate the distance of these objects points with another object, with another point object. So I've written a Java doc for it, showing what it will do. Uh, I've just uh, filled in these parts. Uh, I've written calculate calculates the straight line distance between this point and other point given as argument. And here the parameter is other. The description for this is that, uh, and this actually comes from here automatically. I just have to write this description for it. So the other point uh, to calculate the distance from. So this is what this parameter uh, will actually be used for. And then I have added this, uh, this was also auto-generated, this at return. And I just had to fill in this part. So what is, what is it going to return? Uh, what do you understand from, uh, from the value that is being returned from here? So what you will understand is this will basically be the straight line distance between the two points. Okay, so all these things I just had to fill in this part, this part, I just had to fill in these parts and the rest of the things, the param return, all these things were auto-generated uh, by the IDE whenever I wrote these things. Uh, just to show you an example, when I write, for example, when I write this here, what it will, uh, this will be a double star, double star. 
So when I do this, it will automatically generate this thing for me. See, it already generated the at return, but it is not generating any at param because this does not take any parameter. This get x does not take any parameter, so it, it is not generating anything like this. Okay, so this was just a demonstration here. Now notice the other uh, main class. Inside the main function, I'm creating two objects, each of point class, and then what I'm doing is suppose I want to store for the point one p one. I want to store its x and y values in some variables. So what should I use? I should use the get x and get y functions, right? So notice that uh, when I call, when I try to call the get x, get x, okay. When I try to call it, you do not see uh, and press control space. Also, another thing you guys should uh, know, if you're using uh, NetBeans, then uh, remember this, uh, a keyboard shortcut that is control space. When you write control space, you see a lot of uh, suggestions here. Okay. Usually in other IDEs, it shows you the suggestions while you are writing. For example, when you write get, it will automatically, usually for other IDs, it will show you the suggestions already. Like get x, get y, all these suggestions will be shown. But in here, in order to reduce the clutter, this type of uh, implementation was done that you won't directly get it unless you want it. So if you want it, you can just directly call it by using control space. So when I press control space, I get these uh, things, these suggestions here. And notice that in these suggestions, when I click on them, I do not get anything in, in here. See, nothing is being shown because there is no Java doc for it, no uh, documentation for it. So no description is being shown here. Suppose I call some other function, suppose for example, distance, uh, okay. For example, I have this distance function. Okay, I have this distance functions cre uh, function created in here, At, and I also have written a Java doc for it. So since I've written a Java doc for it, whenever I write dist control space, look, control space. So I am getting some uh, suggestions in here, and the first uh, one of these suggestions is distance. And when I click on distance, see that I am getting some information about it. Uh, and this information, for example. Uh, parameters and the returns, what it returns, all these things are actually coming from the thing that I wrote here. So this javadoc tag will actually be helpful within your IDE as well. When you write these things and save it, okay. So when you are using it uh, in another file, for example, in this file, in the javadoc example file, when I'm using it, I will get all these things. So it will automatically come from the other class where I've written the javadoc. So uh, similarly, if I write any Java doc in here, if I create a new function in here, suppose, uh, if I create a new function in here and I write a Java doc for it, okay. Uh, then if I write a Java doc for it, and if I want to use this function in another, uh, use this function in another file, uh, I will also see the things that I've written here, I will see them in that file as well. Okay, so this is just to remember that any Java doc you write will, be helpful for in, in your IDE as well when you're using it in another, in another function. Okay. So as you can see, I have a documentation for distance, but I do not have any documentation for get x. So that is why I'm not seeing this. When I press control space uh, and I go to this get x and get y, I do not see any information for this. So let us write an, in, some information for get x and get y. Okay. So uh, I'm writing a documentation just to show you guys. So this get x function, what is it supposed to do? It is supposed to, uh, this get x function is supposed to return or give access, basically. It is, since this is a, pri a private value, look at this, this is a private value. So this value cannot be seen from any other class. So what we are use, uh, doing is, we are using this get x function to give access to this private value. So give access to the private at attribute x, okay. And the return value is basically an integer value that is, uh, this, this will return the x coordinate of the object that is calling it. Okay, and similarly, the same Java doc will be useful for get y as well. Only the difference is that it will, it will give me the y coordinate, okay. So now I've written this Java doc for uh, two Java docs for two functions. Now I'm going to save it. And when I now 
press control space notice that when i hover over uh, click on get x and get y i'm getting some information for it see and this information is coming from the java doc that i wrote here okay so this was a very simplistic example of using java doc now let us just uh, use it and see get x then p1 dot get y so when i do this and execute it i am seeing the values that i set for p1 okay the x and y values that i set for p1 as you can see here okay and now suppose i want to also uh, suppose now i want to get the distance value at least okay the distance between p1 and p2 okay so i what i will have to do is i'll have to create a new double variable since the distance will be a, a double value so double dist equals uh, p1 from p1 i'm trying to calculate the distance of p2 so notice that when i hover over distance it will show me all these things i know that the return uh, the this function signature is given here what kind of function it is it will return a double type and a double type value and what does that double type value mean i have already written here so all these things are actually obtained from here so now what i just have to do is i just have to uh, call this uh, distance p2 okay and it will store this value in dist and then i can execute it then i'll see this distance this is actually root 2 okay I, and i'm just to clarify i'm using the uh, this formula root over x x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square i'm just using that formula that you already know from your intermediate level coordinate geometry okay so i'm using that formula to calculate the distance and this is how it is coming so now this is all about how you can write java doc and now just to show you a more interesting thing i have i haven't written much of uh, much code here i have just filled in some stuff some descriptions and all these things auto uh, got auto generated when i was writing code here and now what you can do is you can go to tools uh, not tools you can go to run just notice this part this might be different for other ides i am showing it for uh, netbeans you can look it up for other ides how you can do it in other ides like eclipse for netbeans what you you can do is you can just go to run then generate java doc okay so when you click on this it will uh okay it will open a browser in my case it opened firefox i do not usually use firefox okay uh so this thing got generated as you can see so i did not write much code here but it uh, i just filled in some stuff some uh, values for the tags within the tags and just by using the api i can very easily generate this documentation see uh, i have two classes within my uh, package java doc example package i have two classes so these two classes are being shown i can go to go inside any of the class and i can see all the things that are inside the class the constructor point constructor then the methods that i have created for it for example the distance method the get x method the get y method and i can actually go inside any one of these methods and it will give me the details okay what it does all these things and all this information is actually coming from the things that i put here all the things that i put here so as you can see i haven't had to write much of anything but uh, i uh, with very little effort i got this nice professional looking documentation so this is how using a api called java doc you can easily create a documentation for your uh, any of your, any code for your project as well and this will be very important for your project because at the end of the semester the pro, uh, project that you will be submitting i will be expecting some kind of documentation within that project where anything that was created by any particular individual uh, team member you can easily uh, put your contribution here for example suppose this function was created by me but this function suppose is created by someone else what i can do is i can just write uh, at author one one suppose and i can give credit to a different author okay so uh, another person who was creating this particular function may write his uh, credit here so that way it is very easily uh, i can very easily understand anyone can any other third party can easily understand what you have done here which part was implemented by whom so it is very easy to keep track of okay so 
this was just a demonstration for showing how you can create javadoc and how with very little effort you can get something like this uh, an html document that will uh, very clearly show what you have uh, what things you have done okay and just to clarify one another uh, other thing that is here where is this uh, all these things coming from if you want to go to the actual source of it then you can go here inside your project folder you will see something called dist okay uh, then there will be another folder called javadoc inside this you will see a lot of files the main file that you want to start off with is the index html okay if you open it this is the thing that you will get this is what happens when you actually uh, generate javadoc from here when you generate it it actually opens it creates all these things and it opens the index html so this is the thing that you will see you can go inside and at any time you can see this okay so that will be all uh, in your next uh, lab task i'll be expecting something like this you can actually practice it on any small uh, dummy project that you can create you can practice it practice this all these things on it and in the next lab we'll be seeing something like this the use of it and it, at the end of the semester also i expect something uh, like this some use of javadoc in your project so that it is easily understood from your javadoc what you have done in your project okay so that will be all thank you everyone